Hey, welcome back. Um, this is a topical lesson. We're talking about understanding core qualities. Now, take one, I took you through the basics of the structures of how certain chords relate to certain tones. Using the number system, and this is take two, and we usually take it up a notch. Um, what I was gonna do is, is talk about the core qualities as it pertains to worship, uh, traditional and contemporary styles of gospel music. But we kind of already covered the worship side of things because those are just the basic major chords and minor triads and stuff like that. So I'm going to skip the worship thing because that's pretty much what we did and take one. All right, so we're going to start off with the traditional side of things as far as chord qualities go and how they relate to the nervous system. Because like I said, having an understanding of the quality of chord that relates to the bass note or the tone that you're listening for really helps to narrow down exactly what chord to play. And in traditional music, it's the same types of chords that play it over and over, especially when you go to the one and when you go to the four. So you still have primary chords in the case of traditional music and more toe tapping style songs, but instead of the primary chords being major, they're gonna be dominant. So I'll show you what I mean. So first off, you should know we're in the key of D flat major, if not, let's look at the scale one more time. So D flat is the one, E flat is the two, F is the three, G flat is the four, A flat is the five, B flat is the six, the C is the seven, and we're back at the one, D flat. So that's our number system and our scale. Now, in this particular lesson, we're going to be covering the traditional style as well as the contemporary style and the types of chords that relate um, as far as chord quality goes when it comes down to the bass notes. Because you can be listening to a traditional song, and when you go to a certain bass note, there's a certain type of chord that falls in line with that particular bass note that happens more often than not. For example, if you're on a one, you know, the one is one of the primary chords that you have. The primary chords are your one chord, your four chord, and your five chord, right? So we're in the key of D flat major. So the one is D flat, the four is G flat, and then the five is A flat, right? So these are your primary chords. And normally, in most cases, these chords would be major. But in a sense of the traditional style of gospel music, where you got the hand uh, clapping foot stomach style songs or the toe tappers, you're gonna find that these particular chords are dominant. Now, what does that mean? Well, a dominant chord involves the flat seventh. So you have a major seven, and then you have a dominant seven. The dominant seven is the flat seven. So if you look at the scale of D flat, we got D flat one, or I just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the major seven of D flat, but this is the dominant seventh. And this is the tone that gives you that blue style, that particular sound that kind of gives you that churchy vibe, okay? So when it comes down to the one, four, and the five, what's gonna give you that sound is by adding the flat seventh of those particular tones. So if we're on a D flat and we're on a one, nine times out of 10, you're gonna either play a D flat seven chord, and a lot of times, once you start to extend a chord or play certain voicings, sometimes you don't play the root note in the chord. So sometimes you might see a D flat seven chord without this, the, the root note in the chord. So it'll look like something like this, but it all depends on the voicing. But especially like when you get to D flat nine, nines and all of that. So if I wanted to make this a D flat nine, then I would add E flat to the chord too as well. So, these particular approaches, as far as building chords, I want you to go check out Chord County because that kind of will help you to understand how to build chords. I don't want to spend too much time on the structure of chords, but more so the quality of chords. We're understanding chord qualities, right? So you can take the dominant chord. The dominant chord could be a dominant seven. It could be a, a, a nine. It could be a 13. So that would mean instead of saying a D flat major seven, you would say a D flat seven. You take out the word major and just say seven. Anytime you take out the major and add the seven, that's implying that the chord is dominant. 
So if I say I'm playing a D flat seven chord, I'm playing this. Now if I say I'm, I'm playing a D flat nine chord, that means I'm, I'm playing the seven, the D flat seven, but then I also have to add the nine. So the nine, you should always know this, the shortcut for extensions is the two of the scale is always gonna be the nine. The four of the scale is always gonna be the 11. And then the six of the scale is always gonna be the 13th. Because once you start to extend the, the scale and play chord extensions, that's what it's gonna end up being anyway. So if I just use the scale and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? That's the major seven of, of D flat, right? So if you were to play a D flat major seven chord, it would be this. But let's say you wanted to play a D flat major nine. You would have to keep going as, as, far, uh, as far as going up the scale because you have to extend the chord past the, the octave to get the, the chord extension. So you have to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So as you can see, the nine is the same thing as the two. And if we keep going, 10, 11. So the 11th is always gonna be the four. And if we keep going 12, 13, the 13th ex uh, extension note is gonna be the sixth. So when it comes down to chord extensions, remember, if you, you know your two timetables, you should know your two timetables, two, four, six, right? So the two is always gonna be the nine, the 11th is always gonna be the four, and the 13 is always gonna be the six. So when it comes down to dominant chords, you know, when I say you play a D flat seven chord, so the seventh now, the seventh tone, the flat, which is the dominant flat seventh, I'm referring to is always gonna be a whole step down from the root. So it doesn't matter what key you're in, if you know the bass note, the chord, the note that you would add to the chord to make it a dominant sound is always gonna be a whole step below the root. So I'm saying play a D flat seven chord, right? You can start with a D flat major, but then you have to add the flat seven and it's always gonna be a whole step down from the root. So this is a D flat seven chord. Now let's say I tell you to play a G flat seven chord. Okay, so what's the G flat? You know, here's your G flat, and this is the four chord. So if I wanted to make this a G flat dominant chord, I would add the flat seventh for G flat. Now this pertains to the G flat scale, even though we're in the key of D flat major, you know, when you structure chords, they, they're built off of their own particular scale, even though we're in the key of D flat major. So the flat seventh of G flat, of the G flat major scale is E. And remember, you don't even have to think about the scale. Just look at the tone, that's a whole step down. So a whole step means you just skip one note and then and the note after that is the, the flat seventh. So if we were to look at the key of C major, what would the flat seventh be for a C major chord? Or how would we play a C dominant chord? Okay, that's our C major chord, and then we add the flat seventh, which is B flat, and it's a whole step down from the root. Okay, so that's the idea of dominant chords. They, they just have the flat seventh, and that's what gives you that bluesier sound. Da -da. All right, so let's go back to the key of D flat major. Okay, so now the one, four, and the five, they're gonna be your dominant sounding chord. So you could play a D flat seven on the one. You could play a D flat nine on the one. You can even play a D flat 13 on the one. All right. Now I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick with the one for now, but just remember that same concept as it pertains to the one, four, and the five being your primary chords. Um, that works for the four and the five too as well. So you can play a G dominant, G flat, dominant seventh on the four, you know, because it's the one, four, and the five, the D flat the G flat and the A flat, those are your primary chords. Um, but in the case of traditional music, we're using dominants for the primary chords, dominant types of chords. So you can play a G flat uh, seven chord on the four. When you get to the four, you can play a G flat nine chord. You can play a G flat 13 chord when you get to the four. And there's other options, and I'm gonna get to those as well. Now, when you get to the five, it's a little bit different um, because most of the time when you get to the five, it's used to go back to the one, or it's used as more of a passing type of thing for a chord progression that's gonna take you to the four. So you would be doing like a five, one, 
for a type of chord progression, but we're gonna get to that. So let's go back to the one. So I already said that you can play the dominant seventh, you can play the dominant nine, and the dominant 13, okay? Now, once you start to extend the chords and everything, you're gonna find that the root note is missing. So when it comes down to voicing the chords, it's just a matter of you're getting some good voicings of specific types of chords under your belt. And the more songs that you actually pay attention to now that I'm giving you this insight, you're gonna to start to see what I'm saying is very true. You're gonna to start to notice like, wow, every time I go to this bass note, I'm playing this particular type of chord quality. And the chord quality that I'm talking about now is dominant. We're talking about dominant chords, okay? So, now there's other options of things that happen in traditional music when you're on the one. And a lot of these chords can be applied to playing behind a preacher too as well. But um, the diminished seven chord, the diminished seven chord for the D flat, uh, for D flat diminished is D flat, E, G, and B flat. So this is another chord that you're gonna find a lot when you're playing traditional music. So whatever tone you're on, you can play that diminished seven chord. Okay, so that's one. Now, another thing that you're gonna find is the 13 chord which, with the sus 11. But it sounds very difficult, but all you really have to do is play the major seven chord of the tone that's a host of the flat seven. So whatever the flat seventh is, in this case, we're in the key of D flat, and I said the flat seventh is a whole step down from the root, right? It's B. So that churchy chord, which is a, a, a D flat 13 with a sus 11, sounds very complicated. All it really is is a B major seven over D flat. That's really what it is. But you know, the names start to get complex when you start to look at the scale and notice how things are sussed and all of that. But just know for any type of 13 sus 11 chord, just play to make it very simple. Whatever tone, whatever the tone of flat seventh is for that particular chord, play that tone, but make it a major seven chord. So let's go to the key of C. So if I wanted to say, okay, what for C, or the chord that I can play on the one is a C 13 with a sus 11. Sounds very hard, but you can make it simple by saying, what's the flat seventh of C? It's B flat. So all a C 13 with a sus 11 is, is a B flat major seven over C. All right, so for any chord, find a flat seventh and play that major seven. Play the, whatever the flat seventh is, make that a major seven chord and play it over that bass note. And then you have um, this 13 with a sus 11. So that chord, when you hear it, it's like this. So if, you're on, if you were on a one and you're playing behind a preacher or something, or even playing a traditional song, you can go from a diminished seven chord, and then you can go to that 13 with a sus 11. And then you can either go to a, a regular D flat 13 chord. So you got the 13 chord, you got the sus 11 13, and then you got the diminished chord, okay? Now, what other options did I have on here? For the most part, that's it. If I come across anything else, you know, I'll, I'll bring it up. But at this point, you know, when you're listening to music, it's a matter of voicing the chord. So once you get the chord quality, then it's a matter of listening to the chord and listening to the melody and saying, okay, so if I'm listening to this chord and D flat is on top, you got a lot of options, okay? But first you know the chord quality is that it's either a dominant chord or I showed you it could be a diminished chord. So if you hear this, that sounds very different than this is a D flat seven or a 13. Hear the difference then? Listen to the notes that stick out. That sticks out, that E flat then. Listen to the diminished seven. You hear that G sticks out a lot. So when it comes down to chord qualities, use your ear, it's about that time to really start paying attention and using your ear to start paying attention to the chord qualities and how certain chords sound over certain tones, okay? So those are some of the options on the one. So when we go to the two, um, the two you can play a dominant chord too as well. So you can play like E flat seven, 
You can play an E flat nine. Right there. <laughs> have to think about it. You can play E flat 13, but it all depends on the context. So basically, the same way I, I approach the one, which is you can play a dominant seven, you can play a dominant nine, you can play a dominant 13. All those same types of things apply. We're on the two, you can use a dominant chord on the two. Now it all depends on where you're going. Um, a lot of times when you play a dominant chord on the two, it's gonna take you to the five. You don't really ever do a two chord with a dominant sound and then go to the and go somewhere else is very rare. Um, but another option besides that, so if, like a two, this is like an E flat nine. Or this is an E flat nine chord on the two to the five to the one. So normally when you go to the two with a dominant chord, you're gonna to go to the five, to the one, okay? So that's that bluesier sound, coming from the two, whoops, to the five, to the one. So it all depends on, you know, the, the chord voicings that you're gonna to go to when you go to the five. Now, in some cases, the two can be simple. You can use minor chords on the two. And a lot of times when you do that, you can go a, a lot of different places. So um, you can play a G flat major set, not a G flat major set. Well, you can do that, but from a simple approach, um, when you're playing traditional music, when you're on the two, you hardly ever just play a straight minor chord. So if we're on the two, it's rare. You won't just play an E flat minor chord. A lot of times it's an E flat minor seven which is really the same thing as a G flat major chord over E flat. And I talked about this in take one. So uh, whatever the four is, if you play that over the two, that makes it a, a, a minor seven chord. Or whatever tone that's a minor third up, or one, two, three half steps up, three half steps up from that tone. So this is where we are, R on the E flat. And if we count up three, one, two, three, you could play that major chord, G flat major over E flat. And that makes this chord a minor seven. So it's the same thing. If we look at a regular minor seven chord, it looks like this. We got the E flat minor root, E flat, G flat, and B flat. And then adding the D flat is what makes this chord a minor seven chord. This is just a regular E flat minor. This is an E flat minor seven. But we're playing the E flat in the bass. It's still a part of the chord, but it really just looks like a G flat chord over E flat. So you can use those shortcuts. So usually when you're playing this, it's like, okay? So that's where you hear that G flat major chord over E flat, but it's minor, okay? And when you hear this, you can either go from a two to the five, just like we did in take one, this works for worship. This is like one of the most common and one of the most universal two five ones there is because it works not just for worship, it works for many situations and it even works in traditional where you will find a lot of dominant sounding chords. But in this case, when you're doing a two to the five, you could play that E flat minor seven to the G flat major chord over A flat and then go to the one, okay? So it all depends on the context and what you're doing, but these are options. So when you're on the two and it sounds like this, you know, that could be minor. But if it sounds dominant, now that's the sound you have. And you, sometimes you hear that walk when you're on the two. Okay, and that's just walking down to the nine. So whatever the nine chord is, in this case, um, we have D flat, F and B flat. It looks like a B flat minor chord though, but it's an E flat nine. So if we look at an E flat nine chord, this voicing when you hear that walk down, you're just taking up a, a part of the chord and just taking it up a whole step and then coming back down. So this is a voicing of an E flat nine, right? And you, you're omitting certain things like you, you're taking out the three and then the root note is in the, it's in the bass. So you can take the root note out, 
And then we don't also don't have the three of the chord. So just to keep it simple, you know, these things could get very complicated when you start to think of the fastest way and the easiest way to look at these chords, but it's just a matter of knowing shortcuts. Shortcuts are the key to success when it comes down to learning everything fast. And then once you practice, like some of these chords off the circle of fourths. So take this chord and then play it off the circle of fours. Okay? Stuff like that, taking the same chord, it'll help you to really get the voicing down to all 12 keys. But I'm going off on a tangent, going way left. But pretty much all this is is an E flat nine coming down with half steps, all right? You might hear that a lot, but it's based off of the chord quality of a dominant sound. That's what, what I really want you to understand, okay? Now, another thing that happens on the two is sometimes you might do a sharp five, sharp nine chord, okay? And that's when you're doing a two, five, one. You might go from a two with a sharp five, sharp nine chord to the five with a sharp five, sharp nine to the one. Now, these have a distinct sound because there is so much tension. When you hear these particular chords, they stand out a lot because Sometimes, like coming up, if you don't have a lot of ear training, it's hard to really listen to the chord and pick out the exact notes. I used to do it myself. Like, I went through the school of hard knocks before I got my hands on theory and understanding what chords were and the types of chords. I literally just used to hear this particular type of chord, and I would, that's, we didn't even have digital downloads back then. We had a tape recorder or we had a, some type of cassette. And imagine me literally just pressing play for one chord and then trying to get the chord and then stop, rewind, play, play again. So it was a process, but picking out what I'm trying to say is picking out chords like this, there's a lot of tension in them. So you, you can hear what it is. So the key thing to do is like when you hear a chord like a sharp five, sharp nine, it has a distinct sound. So trying to just pick it out rather than, okay, saying this is the bass note and this could be a sharp five, sharp nine chord. And then looking up like different voicings or having some type of um, arsenal or some type of memo of, you know, the different voicings of a sharp five, sharp nine. Now, what I do recommend that you do, we have something called the Instant Transposer. And it's a great piece of software to use. Um, once you find one chord, you put the chord in the instant transposer and then it transposes it to all 12 keys. It's a great tool to have, especially if you're hungry and especially if you want to document certain types of chords. As you're learning and as you're growing, you're going to build this big chord vocabulary and you're going to have one chord you play in all 12 keys. So check out Instant Transposer. Give us a call. Tell them JP sent you and they're going to hook you up, all right? It's called Instant Transposer. You can call us at 877-856-4187. And I'm, I'm not just trying to sell this. I'm just really being honest. It is a great tool. And it's going to save you a lot of time when it comes down to transposing these chords in all 12 keys. Because it once you put the chord in, it, it, light, it puts the keys that are supposed to, or you select the keys that it's supposed to be, and then it automatically transposes it to all 12 keys. It's amazing. I'm not lying. All right, so um, on the two, like I said, you can play a sharp five, sharp, sharp nine chord or a dominant seven with a sharp five, sharp nine. So this is a chord that you should get familiar with because in traditional music, this chord is used a lot, especially when you hear those contemporary yet traditional songs that, that you know, like Dorinda Clark or Beverly Crawford, they use a lot of these types of chords, especially on the two and on the five. Whoops, ooh, that's the wrong bass now. On the five, okay? So that's another option on the two. And there's different ways to voice this chord. So look into the different ways to voice the sharp five, sharp nine chord. So what else do we got on the two? Let me see here. Oh, we have a, a dominant seven with a flat nine on the two. So that would mean like this chord, G, B flat, D flat, and E. So it's a dominant seven chord, but then you also have the flat nine. So normally, if you play an E flat nine chord, that's what it sounds like. And this is what it looks like. G, B flat, D flat, and F. But you also have that chord where it sounds like this. So. So 
So instead of playing the F on top, so it's coming in a two, five, one, or going from the two. Anytime you hit this chord, you want to go to the two, to the five, to the one, okay? And if you look at the chord, it looks like a diminished seven chord, but it's over the E flat. So all you're doing is taking that top note from the E flat nine chord, and you're going to flat it. So it changes the name of the chord to an E flat seven with a flat nine. Instead of it just being, being an E flat nine chord, it turns into an E flat with a flat nine. So that's, I don't want to throw too much theory at you, but I want you to understand that these types of chords happen. Like, write it down. You don't necessarily have to listen to this over again. Just remember, on a two, you got the option of uh, the minor chord. You can Sometimes it's a minor seven. Uh, sometimes it's a minor nine. It can even be a minor 11. The more extended you go with the chord voicing, as far as adding a seventh or a ninth or 11th, the more contemporary you're taking the, the sound. So if you listen to a, a traditional song and it has a lot of contemporary flavor to it, all that really means is that the chords are more extended, where you know they sound a lot jazzier, rather than sticking to the just traditional dominant sevens or dominant nines and, and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the two.